Welcome to the You Can Man podcast, episode 81. I'm Josh. I'm Tim. And I'm Dave. And on this week's episode, you should have an outdoor fire pit. All right, guys, welcome back to the You Can Man podcast, where we believe what one man can do, you can do as well, with a little help from your friends and the proper know-how. We think that you guys can probably make an outdoor fire pit, so we'd like to talk about that today, and we'd like to give you maybe a little know-how on that. The weather's starting to get cool, and uh, it's time to make some fires, COVID-friendly, you know, outside, Invite the neighbors over. You don't got to invite them inside. Just have them outside. Can the COVID, like if your fire pit were really small, like three feet, you know, in diameter, and so you're not technically socially distance, distant, this is assuming that you're standing right on top of your fire pit. Are you going to say something sense. about like the fire burning Can, the yeah, COVID? Yeah, like as oh, you're gosh. like shouting at people across the fire pit, because that's what you do at fires, right? am I right? Um does it kill the COVID? I'm going to say would. sure. I would say there's a level of protection. And the there. COVID probably goes up, right? Because who knows? The Hot heat rises, rises, so the COVID rises. There's a lot of places COVID. Going to an outdoor fire pit party shindig is the best thing you could do right now. Hmm. Well, so here we go. Outside. Let's be outside. It's nice. Yeah. So what happened this week, guys? Anything noteworthy? Fall break uh, for our kids, which means no kids in school. Some of us went. No kids in school and no parents in work. Am did I you right? go to work? I did. Okay. <laughs> but you yeah. guys but you guys did. No, yeah. I uh we took a little yep. head up to Ella J, my family, and uh did the apple picking in the apple capital of the South or Georgia or the country. I don't or know what it is. The city. Did the whole apple picking thing. We did a couple hikes, got some waterfalls in. Nice. Got to see Amicalola Falls, which is debatably the tallest waterfall east of the Mississippi River. I did not know this. Why is yes. it debatable? Hey, wait a minute. There's, is Amicalola the, the one that's like, it? I mean, all, all waterfalls cascade, but it kind of like steps down, right? Yes, that's yeah. the debate. So is that's, it a continual that's, free fall? Yeah, that, that's not real. That's well, not a, you I, can't, that's. I could, I could agree with you, but I'm not allowed to just in my soul. I'm not, I cannot agree with you <laughs> um, on everything. Oh, yeah, yeah obviously. Just in general principle. Well, I don't know why I didn't pick up on that right. immediately. <laughs> so, but when you're standing at the base of Amicola Falls, and I understand, I'm, I'm all about like, let's count It's the like a water fall. slide. But you look up and it's at the very, you can see the whole thing, but it's at the very top of a mountain. It's like this yeah. little trickle. So you can see the whole thing. So I count it. I think that counts as a waterfall because you wouldn't call each little step its own waterfall. Like the entire thing is the water. I, I agree yeah. with you, but it's not. Don't all, agree with me. Please. If if it were just a, a regular waterfall, that's more awe inspiring. Like sure. you go to Amicalola and you're like, I sat in the car for however long for this. No, it's worth no, it. No, totally it's really. Worth it. I don't Am- know. But what's cool, Amicalola is uh, spectacular. But when you get up to the top, you can drive around to the top or hike. The amount of water going over the edge is very unimpressive, yep. as opposed to Niagara, which is not that tall, but it's, it's overwhelming. rivers and rivers, yeah, it's literal rivers going over water. the edge. Yeah. So another uh, fun fact about Amicalola is the approach trail to the Appalachian yep. Trail just, is there. Just right there. Yep. Yes. That's where you kick it off. Cool. So I shot a, um, I, sh- I sent Josh a picture of this, but uh, I built some shed doors Recently. Finally? Well, I built them probably two years ago. Oh, that's right. You uh, hadn't mounted them. I, I haven't mounted them because I didn't have anybody that would help me. It's kind of weird. I well, mean, with I'm, a little help from your friends. Yeah, <laughs> and, and the proper know-how. <laughs> Luckily, I have the proper know-how, but not a little help no from my friends. friends. For two years, I couldn't get you guys to come over and help well, me. Whatever. Now we're hey, not I don't want to hear excuses. But anyway, I got them mounted. And that was, I don't know, three or four months ago. And very quickly shot an arrow directly through my new door? shed door. So I, I on I, purpose, not on purpose. Oh. I bought a a bow, right? So I'm like doing the archery. You're thing into that now, now, I guess. And uh, it's a lot of fun, but it was. I don't know very much about it at all, but I do know that it was set up very poorly when I bought it. So if you're gonna if you're gonna get into like archery, you need to go to you need to go to a reputable place. Is all I'm gonna say. Okay. Uh, anyway, so my arrows were. Um, Did I you go to Harbor Freight? Yes, I went to Harbor Freight uh, to their archery pro shop. I can only imagine a bow and arrow from Harbor Freight. I ended up getting it fixed, but it was shooting like a foot low at 
like 20 yards, right? Okay. And so anyway, one of them went flying a little askew and went, the arrow went halfway through my... Uh, nice. Yeah, through my shed door. And it took some doing to get that thing out I mean, of at least it didn't go through your kid or something. You know? Yeah, you know, I'll always shoot super safe, obviously. You can shoot in everything, including your shed doors, but yeah, you got to be careful. Okay. That's what you did on, on your kid's fall break? Yes. Okay. Arrow through the door. Nice. Yep. Well, we went camping, a t- two night camp out with several other families. It was super fun. Uh, place up in the North Georgia mountains, Blairsville area. And then we also went to Hilton Head Island for a, uh, several days. So that was really nice. I ran on the island. It's flat. It yeah, was so it's a good super place to nice. Run. Oh, you liked it? That's to me. There's no place worse running than the beach. Maybe it's nice. No, I didn't run on the beach. Not on the beach. No, you only do that in movies. But like running at the beach, (laughs) it's always so hot. And uh, because now we got to wake up early, Dave. I mean, I mean I've, you know, the last time I ran at the beach was like in July and I ran in the morning and it was just Florida is July. Florida is July. Yeah, it was awful. You could run at three in the morning in July in Florida and you'd be sweating. It's terrible. So how was the run? It was great. I think it was maybe one of my fastest 10K times. I'm not sure. Nice. As you said, it was But I ran, on, I ran on the beach, actually, for a short time, and I think it actually it, it slowed me down. Oh, yeah. It That's slowed me expected. down. Yeah, and it was high tide, so the, the sand that I was oh, running on. Oh, you were running on, on soft sand. No, it's, soft sand. You know, you I mean, come on. You think it slowed you yeah, down? It's, yeah, it definitely should, slowed you should. down. Should. Yeah. All right, let's get into talking about some outdoor fires. Oh, okay. yeah. Y'all. All right. So this is a subject. I mean, it's Georgia. We're in Georgia. The weather can be miserable, although we had a great spring, a not horrible summer, and now it's fall and it feels like fall. Is it false fall? We don't know. But (laughs) false fall. As of like this week, it's it's like perfect. Yeah, it's it's really nice. out. It's really uh, mid 70s is a high. Yeah. And chilly in the morning. Yes. Well, I feel like, so this is obviously fire pit season. I don't know if that's a thing, but it feels like it's a thing. And I don't know if it's a new thing. When I was growing up, I never saw a fire pit in a backyard. Now, maybe that's because I lived in a neighborhood that bordered Cherokee County. Well, what? (laughs) But uh, nobody had fire pit. We Now, people did have like burn stuff in their yards, I guess, but there were no fire pits back in the day, right? I I would agree with that. I don't remember ever seeing that. Now, we would have a fire in our backyard just to burn the yard. Debris, right. but you, we just make it in the grass. You like, didn't have a dedicated <laughs> nobody's, fire. Pit, nobody's having right. some nice fire pit with paver stones no, and look, stuff. There's a lot of things that the hipsters have brought to us that have been good. One of them, good food. The like other one, really, really, nice really tight out, jeans on men. Yes, ni- nice outdoor areas as well. So anyway, it's fire pit season. You know, your wife, maybe, maybe you are itching for a, a fire pit outside. We're going to talk about how to do that two years ago and how to not do it. Okay, two years ago. I think it was two years ago. Might have been three. You've had that longer than two years. Then it was three, and it was like Labor Day weekend. Anyway, a couple buddies. Dave was one of them. Where uh, was I? Because I, I feel like I, I weren't back town. there. Must have I been came home, and I was like, man, y'all, y'all done got this done without me. I had a couple brothers and Dave probably missing people. The project cost wasn't terrible, but I did rent a Bobcat. Uh, to move yeah you did that's biting off you know yeah i'm glad i did it we did um so i made a big gravel area basically that we could put a fire pit in the middle of so i've seen a lot of you know the pinterest stuff and they've got these fire pits and they're you know normal three four feet diameter and then there's a sitting area which is nice but they don't account for like the heat of the fire and a lot of these sitting areas end end up you have to be on top of the fire to be near it i didn't want that so I built the whole big spread, um, dug down a few inches, put down some slate chips uh, as the surface. You put down landscape fabric first. I did, and so I know we're not. I don't know how much to get into the like the landscaping part yeah, of it, but because that doesn't really have much to do with the fireplace itself. Right. But what Josh is saying, he's he created more of a an entire. Atmosphere. Yeah, Josh there is flexing. Go. He's got, you know, a nice spread back there and he's got the rich guy slate chips going. Right. So it's pretty sweet. Yeah. Patio. The slate chips are off the patio. 
So you didn't do paver stones or anything like that. You just did slate chips, nope. uh, nicely leveled, packed it down, slate chips, and then you just put the uh, the fire pit on top of that. So what is your fire pit made now, of? Now, my fire pit is not like an amazing example for this conversation because we literally made a circle. We bought one of those just literal metal rings that's like a foot tall. Did we dig down or is it just on... We dug down okay. to put the slate chips in. No, no, no. no. Did we dig down for the fire pit? We didn't do anything for the fire okay. pit. My wife and I did this part. We put a circle in the middle of the gravel and dug down a little bit, stuck the metal ring in the ground, and that is our fire pit. It is not special. It was almost free, okay. the cost of the ring. It drains fine because um, water, you know, water will get in there, but it is minimal. We don't... What do you think that, uh, what is it, like a 36-inch ring, maybe? Yes. Something like yes. that? I mean, you could stack some stones around there. It'd be pretty pretty easy, right? You could, yeah. We could dress up the outside of that. But it's fine. You have to yell at the kids, like, don't touch that because that ring heats up nicely. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Josh's is really nice. Maybe we'll post a, a couple photos in our Facebook group of Josh's outdoor area. But, you know, look, if you want to just start small, you can just get a ring of bricks, of spare bricks you got. I mean... Is that a thing? Because I got spare bricks in my yard. <laughs> I have spare bricks as yeah. well. Yeah, I had spare bricks holding the tarp down on my roof for <laughs> over a year. <laughs> but you went and bought bricks, if, I, if I'm I not mistaken. I did buy mistaken. some bricks, and our first guest ever brought me a brick. That's right. That's right. Which, That's that right. was actually my nicest brick. Yeah. <laughs> which but makes I, sense because it's from Sandy Springs. Yeah, I'm just saying, look, <laughs> if you want to just try out the concept, just get you some bricks and make a ring and sacrifice part of your grass and say, okay, here's where the fire yeah. pit's going to be. Um, it's a good test run. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, it doesn't need to be fancy. I mean, you can, like Tim's saying, bricks are those nice, uh, they're kind of, I don't know what they're called, but they're the stones that are kind of curved, so you can, like, stack them around in a circle. Sure. And then you have a fire pit. I kind of like that idea, because you can literally test it out. Because before you commit to a location, maybe you have a little fire going that you just slap together. Right. And you're like, oh, this is terrible because X, Y, Z. And then you can right. move to a different spot. Yeah, because you can spend a crap ton of money on one of these fire pits. And so maybe doing something temporary for a season might be your best bet. And, you know, you may not be staying in the house for much longer and you may not get that money back out. So maybe you decide, hey, we're just going to do this. So uh, another option, though, which would be completely mobile, is there is a company actually that's Atlanta based and they make these really cool fire pits pits that are made from recycled old propane takes and the the ends of them so the pressure caps if you will and they come in like anywhere from like 30 inches to like 42 inches so we're just talking about like a bowl shit oh, right? it's like it's a bowl it's a steel bowl and they they tout that these things are lifetime they will outlive you you can pass them on to your kids and Very grandkids thick gauge it's thick gauge steel. Not going to rust it is. out. Yeah. Now it will it It'll will rust. rust, but that's just kind of part of it, and it's part of their thing. Like even you go to their website. It's called S and S Fire Pits. You can check it out, and they seem to be, at least in the southeast, I guess, one of the premier you know manufacturers mm -hmm. of these. So. Um, but you could do something like that. They've got various legs that they put on them, and we'll post a link to this uh, to this company in our show notes. But I've been thinking about getting one of those because you, if you think about all of the cost, if you were to do it with paver stones and build this thing up. Or like it, what I did, bring in tons of gravel. Yeah, and, yeah. Then, I mean, that that cost really starts to add up. Now, these things are expensive. I mean, the 36 inches, I mean, it completely depends on the legs and all this kind of stuff. But they can run all the way up to like 800 something bucks. That's not bad. But if you think about how much yeah, Josh you is spend, thinking, I, sp I have more yeah. money in my, in my setup. Than yeah. <laughs> now, you're still going to need to put something underneath the thing. Like, I mean, yeah, sure. Could you just stick the thing in your yard? Yes. It's going to kill your grass because it's going to heat up and then it's going to. If you had a decent patio going, maybe yeah. you could put it on. On that you can put them on decks as well oh. uh, but they recommend that you put some sort of like paver stone underneath it so there's like a little bit of separation there and then they mentioned if you have a synthetic deck they're like we haven't tried that yeah. so you're on your own <laughs> uh yeah so but, you're going to be putting down some sort of landscaping some some kind of wood chips or preferably i would say some sort of gravel right yeah they've even got these nice um cooking grates that are sized appropriately for the 
Hmm. for the fire pits those were kind of cool and then they've got what they call these snuffer plates it's just the same diameter as the fire pit just and shuts then, it down yeah and then you know it just deprives the fire of oxygen that way you can you know go to bed or whatever nice. and not have to worry about the fire so that's an option as well and then if you you know you really want to get into all this and you and you want to go the route of building a nice fire pit with the paver stones and building it all up and you're going to build benches and all this kind of stuff. If you're going through that amount of trouble, you should probably do a gas line, like underground natural gas line running from your house to the fire pit. Because how cool would that be? That would be very cool. To have a natural... a lot of time. Yeah, to have a natural gas line, just just like you would in your indoor fireplace to, to get your fire started. You can do this. So I, I looked up because I've never done this before. Have you guys ever run gas line underground? Negative. Yeah, never done it, right? So there is products out there. It's polyethylene pipe, and it's it's been around for a while, and it's completely approved to bury in the ground. You can even buy kits at Home Depot, 100-foot kits so you also have to buy risers so like you can't have you can't just bury the polyethylene pipe and then have it coming up out of the ground because if it got hit by something it could rupture because it's you know it's just the plastic so they have these things uh the risers where it connects underground then comes up with a steel pipe and then from the steel pipe you connect just you know regular gas line from there Mm -hmm. But it's very doable. So it's a that is a DIY job. Now, if you're going to do it legit, you've got to get permits or do what you want. So, <laughs> but we had to say that, you know, you, you probably need to get a permit. Try to so, follow your local Yeah, laws. do it the right way. Yeah, follow your local <laughs> laws and regulations. Uh, but there's, there's considerations when you're doing this, uh, even if you're not going to get a permit. You want to bury the thing at least 12 inches. I think they recommend 18 inches. I've cut a cable line that was 12 inches down with a, like a yard tiller. So right. you, know, you don't want to be cutting a yeah. natural gas line. Yeah. And so you guys have probably seen this with other stuff with like electrical stuff. Uh, you want to put that caution tape down. But but actually, sorry, before that, let me back up. They, they recommend that you run a tracer line with the line set. So what that is, is that you can then use a tracer tool where it puts a um, electric current on one end. And then there's a special tools where you can just locate exactly where that line is later on down the road so you want to do that and then also put the caution tape down once you've put like i think six to eight inches of soil on top of the pipe then you put the caution tape down it's just an added bit of you know security somebody's digging oh what's this caution tape doing a foot down and then i'll realize stop me well i just keep got be like (laughs) what's under this caution tape? random (laughs) yeah so that would be an amazing thing to do to have a friggin' gas line run into your outdoor fire pit. I mean, to me, that's the next level. Now, now that's, you, yeah, that's. Now, you could also go completely gas, right? So they've got the fire pits where it's just, you know, you fill it with the rock and then you have like the, the gas glass pebbles. Yeah, whatever, you've got yeah. the gas. So line. you're talking like a gas starter is like what this I, is. I'm more envisioning that. Yeah. Um, but another option that I was thinking about too, have you guys ever seen these like flamethrower torch things? They sell them at Harbor Freight, Dave. For real? Yeah. Uh, that you connect to a regular gas or regular propane like tank for your gas grill. A lot of people use them to like kill weeds and stuff like this. Yes, have you guys I've seen, seen these? Yep. So, man, I mean, if you don't want to go through the trouble of burying a gas line, you just want the gas line just as a fire starter, get you one of those. I mean, that'd be cool anyways, right? <laughs> yeah, get that's a little, conversation starter. Yeah, a little flamethrower thing, hook up to your propane tank. You can just grab it from your gas grill and then there you go, you're in business. Man, they really use those to kill weeds because that sounds like a dream come true. Yeah, me. I had a landscaper friend tell me that he used it to kill weeds. Yeah. I, I don't know. It seems kind of dangerous and overkill, but uh, I mean, I you don't, don't want to be bending down. <laughs> no, right? Yeah. You know, there, there's unlimited options is the bottom line. Um, the gas, the natural gas line is something I considered if I didn't have a giant concrete patio between my fire pit and my house that I would have to like That's go under a hurdle. or through. Because uh, I, I considered, I, I looked into it. Um, cause you can, I mean, you can make them real nice. You can build a little, like a little housing unit for that post that comes up so that it's like fully concealed and then have your 
uh, actual fire pit off of that. The flamethrower propane thing reminded me too. That's an option as well to have a propane tank. Like for instance, if it was on your concrete patio and you had one of those bowl type setups, you could have, you can build like a nice little housing for the yeah, propane tank you drill and a just hole, switch it on right there. Yeah. I like that. Um, I've seen a lot of people do that online. So the materials are just unlimited. There's not, I mean, there's not a lot we can direct you besides just go for it. Yeah, get something out there, put something in the yard, test it out. We're trying um, to get you the wheels turning, right? Yes. So I, I've been meaning to do this in our yard. And so I've been thinking through all these options. And so we just kind of wanted to throw out some of these options. Um, I was going to mention, Josh, have you, so we both, Josh and I both live in like older houses. And when we were doing a lot of the renovations and ripping out a lot of landscaping and stuff, I just, I was just thinking about gas lines. I had all of these gas lines running like everywhere underground and at my house outdoors. Did you have any of that? I think I pulled one. Yeah, because we had yeah. we had like a gas lamp. They had this outdoor gas grill, and it was just there's no markings. It was this just like copper they line. They just dropped the copper in the lamp. Yeah, they the, just didn't the even care. Yeah. yeah, so don't do that. You know, you, you might be thinking, oh, I'm just gonna get regular old. I don't know, cast iron or something and bury the line. You do not want to do that. Yeah, that, that's like the other end of the you can man spectrum. Like one end is like I'm too nervous to do anything, and then the other end of the conversation is I'm just going to do this and no, that's just that's watch copper. this man. <laughs> yeah, that's what that is. you we are so big on doing your research and doing it right. If you're not going to do it right, yeah. don't do it or hire somebody that knows how to do it. <laughs> yeah. So in, in the UK man spirit, get out there and get something out. You can go buy cheap stuff. I know both of you have had experience with the like Home Depot self-contained fire oh, pit. Oh, gosh. Yeah, yes. would, we do need to mention that. I would say don't do that because I had one of those and it was one of the you know cheap prefab, like Josh said, you can buy them at Home Depot. Mine was square. And I think it lasted a year. And it just sits like it's designed for like a concrete patio. It just sits on it. It sat on a concrete patio. And, uh, you know, we used it for a year and went out the next year and it was rusted straight through. Right. And so yeah. I, I I believe it had a cover for it, which I'm wondering how water got in there. I mean, water will get in anyway, but uh, it just didn't last. Yeah, we had the same thing. And we took it over to a friend's house to let them use it one night we were hanging out. And I just. I don't know if I just didn't feel like getting it back. You know, I guess it was the fire was in it and it was the fire was still going and we got to go. So I just I was like, I'll pick it up some other time. I just left it there. Six months later. <laughs> they yeah. used it, you know, I don't know how many other times. And it just sat outside and it totally rusted through. So, yeah, don't you might be tempted when you go to Home Depot. These things are going to look really nice. They're going to be they're going to look like they're going to last, but they're definitely yeah. not. So but if you're going to go the fire pit, like steel, whatever metal route, look into using one of those super heavy gauge steel repurposed tank fire pits. Yep. Okay. So I hope that we have given you guys some good solid ideas to get the wheels turning. So what we'd like to see is pictures of your outdoor fire pits. Now, recently I have seen a, a one of our Facebook group members posted a photo of some Adirondack. Yes. Am, I, am I saying that yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Chairs that he built around his fire pit. So that and was he's really, already sharing plans, and other people have plans, and yeah, other people are building some for other people. Because the next of, step is you got to think about seating, and so yep. uh, that's kind of a uh, part of it as well. The Adirondack so. chairs are are legit, especially if you use the right materials. Because first, they're comfortable. Like they are if comfortable. you build the right ones, they just lean nicely. Yes, uh, and then you can leave them outside. Because I have a thing against furniture and other reusable objects being outside. Because we, I don't know if I'm lazy, extra lazy or what but for instance kiddie pools those go uh, outside worse. those are like single use they might as well <laughs> yes. have disposable i've got on one sitting in my backyard yeah. right now that i just don't want to deal with yeah. it's still fine i just gotta like clean the thing i gotta it's one of these blow up inflatable yes, ones no, uh. the worse. anyway that's the anytime someone says let's leave something outdoors i'm like it's gonna get it, yeah it just gets nasty uh, right? so but adirondack chairs like the right materials those those can be outside and those are very yeah. good looking on the on the facebook group yeah, our Facebook group has been steadily growing. We're about to hit 900 members, I think, and hopefully soon we'll be at 1,000. And then I feel there. like we're going to get to that point 
where I hope it'll start exponentially growing. And I did want to uh, give a shout out to all of our new listeners because I've seen an uptick. I think it was uh, since I was on the How to Money podcast, my good buddy Joel and Matt, I was on their podcast. And I think a lot of their listeners heard me and then checked out our podcast. So if you guys are one of them, thank you for joining You Can Man podcast. And we're so glad that you're here. Yeah, welcome to the You Can Man army. Yeah, speaking of good groups, that How to Money Facebook group. Yes. I, I'm in there. I, I hadn't been active or anything, but man. There, you're a lurker. There's so much activity and there's so much crossover on what we're doing. They're really financial focused over there, right. but same spirit. It's awesome. Yeah, so thank you to all of our new listeners. This week's show is is a little bit shorter than we normally do. Uh, we normally have a bonus segment, but Dave dropped the ball. Hey, look, we're on vacation. <laughs> yeah, what do you want, we're man? We're on vacation, Jeez. man. This is true. we're lucky this even to have a show this week. Yeah, yeah. I, so I yeah, I got I got the bonus segment coming up. Hopefully, it's going to be in the next show, but we might run a little bit longer on that one. We'll see. So yes, stay tuned. Dave's are always pretty good. Oh, I bring they're the pretty heat good. every time. <laughs> uh huh. I've All got right. one, I've got one in the in the cooker, and that's why I don't want to. I could do it tonight. I don't want to do it ready. tonight. It's, it's just not. not it's not quite there. I, I feel you. I feel you. All right, guys. Thanks again so much for tuning in, and we will catch you guys next time. Bye.